Hey, hello, brothers and sisters. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Good morning. It's a great pleasure, great pleasure to be here sharing with you. Three years ago, we were here for the first time, and we had no idea that I would be here in this place sharing with you of so many things that God is doing in Brazil. But it's important. So first of all, I am from Brazil, and we're in South America. See that big yellow country? No, we don't speak Spanish. We speak Portuguese. And there are about almost 210 million people in our nation. Uh, I would like to introduce my family. So this is my husband, Rodrigo. He would love to be here with you this morning. But one of our daughters, she got ill, and we had to decide what we were going to do. So I'm here representing the family. But his heart is here with us, and he is also watching us from Brazil. Hello, Rodrigo. Love you. Okay, let me <laughs> let me make up. Okay, these are my kids. Okay, we have four kids: Lucas, who is 20; Kelly and Kathleen, they're twins. They are 17, and Jessica, she's also 17. Uh, and it all started with them. You know, even before we got married, we want, we wanted to have kids, biological and adopted ones, because we understood that God made for Himself a family, and He chose adoption for His to to build His family. So this is an excellent way. If God chose that for himself it's because it's excellent and many things happen in our story and uh, we understood that children belong in families that there's no other place that would uh, do what a family does for a child so we started getting getting involved in projects we, we started in, in uh, uh, eight years ago, we started Pontes de Amor. In that time, there was something that was really bothering us. We found out that some adoptive families, they would give up on their kids because they didn't receive enough training or enough support. And we said, we must do something. We know that sometimes it's hard. We had experienced these hard moments even in our house. But we... We know that it's possible if we have uh, proper preparation and support. So we started that uh, to avoid the solution. And I'd like to share a video with you from Pontes de Amor. Love binds us together. So adopt. We believe that every child needs to be adopted, even the biological ones. There are many kids that are orphans because they don't receive attention and affection out of their parents. Every child needs to have a caregiver that is consistent, that is always there, and that, that will never give up. And that's what we wonder, that's, that's what we, we fight for, our kids. So we started Pontes de Amor, and we understood that to bring forever families to children, we would have to work in these three uh, main paths. Training, offering training to uh, the professionals for the families, uh, giving family support before adoption or before reunification, and after adoption and after reunification and also uh, working with the kids who are in residential homes who are in foster homes uh, to help them thrive uh, but we understood that we could not do much on our own. That to do something for children, we need to work together. Because together we're much stronger. We cannot much do much on our own. We're part of a protection network. We're part of a protection system. In church, businessmen, government, organizations, we should all work together for the sake of these children. Uh, and we are God's people. Uh, Jesus, he was praying to the Father, and he said, Father, make us one 
so that the world will see that you sent me. There is power in unity. There is power in unity. And we know the power of unity. We are the people of God that must work to bring this unity, not only among the church, but among this whole system. Working together with government, with business people, with, uh, with the society, with everyone, so that every child might have a family. So because of this collaboration work, many things happened. We started working in partnership with the, with the Justice in Oberlandia. And then one day, uh, they, uh, we were developing projects together. Uh, one day they called us because there was this house. And they said, do you, you, don't, you don't have a house, you don't have a campus. Would you like to get this house? The house was destroyed. It used to be a residential institution. And it was really destroyed. And I said, well, yes, we do. We want this house. And they said, but how are you going to rebuild it? Do you have money? And said, no, we don't, but God is going to provide. And so because of this collaboration, now we have a new campus. Many people got together. The justice invested some money. Uh, business people invested some money. But ordinary people like you and me, we offered our lives and our resources. And now we have a place that is a beautiful place to receive our kids, to work with our families, and to offer training. So this is what I, I want to share some pictures, some pictures with you. But it's not about the place, it's about what we do. It's about people. So uh, we understood that there was, we saw that there was this national association that works with adoption support groups. And this association was there in Brazil for more than 20 years. So we said we want to join these people. And uh, as we started walking together, we, we, we saw how strong it is to be together. We, we would help each other in training, uh, in, 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 in advice advocacy in changing uh, the way that our governors, that our judges would think, uh, changing practices. And so this is so important. And now uh, I am the president of this association that gathers 170 NGOs spread all over Brazil. I would never imagine I would be in this place. In fact, I resisted that. But God has called us to do some great things. He, he has called ordinary people just like you and me to do his great work. It's not about us. It's about him, and he's going to do it. We're little, we're small, we're limited, but he is great. He's great. Then, uh, one day one friend told us about CAFO. And in 2015, we went to CAFO, Christian Alliance for Orphan Summit, for the first time in Nashville. And we saw the church together becoming the answer for the children, you know. And that was so powerful to us. Then Jody Tucker, she, uh, uh, she brought this invitation for us to come to the Global Forum in Thailand three years ago and we did and that really changed our lives because then we started working together with some other nations with some other organizations and there are so many names that I cannot tell all of them uh, but it's powerful so we started Orphan Sunday in Brazil and I say that Orphan Sunday is the knob that opens the door for the church to get involved with orphans nobody will say no I'm not going to pray for the orphan because it's in the Bible so bring Orphan, orphan Sunday to your country this is powerful. And when we pray, we bring awareness and we find out that we are part of the answer of our own prayers. And that's powerful. Uh, then, together with so many people, Anita was honored here yesterday and she deserves that. She is a, a mighty woman of connections. She's very strategic. And she introduced us to so many important people, to so many uh, nice people like the Richies, uh, like uh, uh, the Johnston, like uh, Judy Rikes and so so many people. We understood that Brazil needed training and in collaboration with all of these organizations and many more people uh, we started bringing special training to Brazil. We received this year uh, these two trainers from Caring Purvis Institute and they spoke in our national conference for 800 professionals in Brazil. And later on they, they brought a training in our city uh, for 80 professions that came, strategic professions, professionals that came from all over the nation uh, to, to take this to the justice, to the residential homes, to the government, and to the NGOs. We also received Beth Smalley. Uh, she was sent by Institute for Human Services, and she's a, a, a specialist in adoption. Uh, so she just came to Brazil to speak in two of our state conferences, and she offered this training. And do you know what? Because of that, the, justice, the national justice has already called us, and they said, we realize that we need to revisit our curricula for adoptive and foster families. Would you help us? 
that is God doing this his great work. So these are some of the people that were in the training. And I'm going to show you some beautiful pictures of our families to talk about some of the things that we have, uh, some of the change that we have reached. Uh, we realize in Brazil that the child needs to be in the center. And for every child, for each child, there is a, a specific way. It's not only reunification. It's not only adoption. We need to see each situation and find the right answer for that child. Uh, we had a problem in Brazil. We had a lot of families that wanted to adopt, but most of them wanted to adopt younger kids and only one kid. So many of them were being left in these institutions. And we said, well, we don't fall in love. We don't fall in love for people that we don't meet, that we don't get to know. These people need to become visible. But the justice in that time would say, no, we need to protect them. We're going to expose them. And they said, no, let them talk about themselves, about their dreams. Let them meet these families, you know. Let, let them have community living. And so we started uh, getting this space in our nation. You know that soccer is an important thing in Brazil. So we started building partnership with soccer teams and these children started becoming visible. The family started falling in love for them. And do you know what happened? Eight years ago, only 9% of Brazilian adoptive families would adopt a group of siblings. Nowadays, almost 40% of them are open to adopt groups of siblings. Many more families, I don't have the numbers, but they're open to adopt children with health issues. Interracial uh, adoption has raised from 6.5 to 60%. People that say it doesn't matter the color, it doesn't matter the race, they're just children, they can be our children. This is Williams. Williams was adopted when he was turning 18. He's a black guy, in, and he was turning 18. He's a boy. It's more difficult to, to get boys adopted in Brazil. But he was in one of these projects with the soccer teams, you know. So he's, he was on screen. He talked about himself. And a family from my state saw Williams. And now they are a beautiful family. We, uh, with the, the work that we're doing with the families, preparing them and giving them support after reunification or after adoption. We decrease family disruption. Actually, we're around 2-3%. It is to it is to be something around 40% of family disruption before. Uh, foster care. There was almost no foster care. Mick P is here there. Thank you so much for the work you're doing in Brazil. Uh, so Mick and some other people started talking to us about the importance of taking care of these this children and family. And now foster, foster care is growing in Brazil. Uh, we were praying so that the church would get involved, remember? Well, I don't know how many of you have heard of the SAN movement. It's a, a Christian movement that calls Christians to, it's a call to action. Christians need to, to get involved and change the reality of society. So we are going to have the SAN Brazil in February. And they decided, they were praying, and there, there are going to be four outcomes. They're going to send people to university, to missions, uh, to high schools, and to care for the orphan and vulnerable. Oh, praise God. <laughs> then they called us. And do you know what happened? Uh, first of all, they, they saw uh, this stadium. Uh, it's Morumbi, the biggest stadium in Sao Paulo. And they thought, well, maybe it is too big. When they opened registration, in five hours and a half, the stadium was completely full. Everything was sold out. People called them and they said, this was faster than you two or Coldplay. Can you imagine that? Now we have three stadiums full of Christians that are going to be there. 150,000 people. There is a wave of Christian people coming to become the answer to the orphans in Brazil and in the world. I believe. I believe. <laughs> Praise God. You know what? I want to encourage you to establish a name. To establish the aim for your country. Make a plan and follow the chronogram. Don't get lost. There are lots of urgent things, but don't get lost on your chronogram. Focus on what is important. There are many things that might separate us, but our focus is to bring children into family care. So let's keep the focus. Watch the language. As Christians, we have our own slangs, <laughs> our own dialect. We need to talk to people in a way that everyone will understand our message. We are not going to leave our, our principles, but we need to talk in a way that it, they will understand. If all, and follow excellence, because God is a God of excellence. It's God's plan, so he will do it. But it's our commitment. He's calling us to the privilege of loving these children, that they are his children. They are our family. They are our children. And it's his fruit. It's for his glory.
Rodrigo wants to, to share something with you, something of his heart. Could you please play the video? Our God is the biggest enthusiastic about families and child protection. He is a big God and we need to learn with him how to live his dreams for this generation. He is a big dreamer and when we understand to live into his dreams, we learn about love and compassion. Compassion is the energy that moves us towards these families and children. We are going to face troubles and difficulties, but compassion will bring life and challenge us to grow and to reach resilience. Resilience is going to bring enthusiasm and enthusiasm will bring more compassion. May God help us to receive and re re can reach this anointing for to transform these realities in this generation in Jesus mighty name. So I want to tell you something. Do not give up. Our history brought us to this place here in 2019. God has brought us here. I have uh, realized that there is poison that comes to our life and it doesn't come to kill us, but it comes on the right amount, on the right dosage to make us ourselves healing for our generation. We have experienced miscarriage, we have experienced problems with our own kids, we have experienced problems in our NGO, lack of money, lack of support, uh, illnesses, so many problems. But these problems made us understand better how people feel, help us to, to be empathic to what people are facing. You know what? It doesn't matter if it's going to be difficult. It's not easy for these kids to live without a family. We already have a family. We were loved already. God loved us first. So now we can love. Now we can commit ourselves to love God's children. And we have no rights of giving up. Because he has never given up on us. And we are not easy kids. You know that. If it were only for one, it would already be worth it. But there are many stories waiting for us. There's no impossible when we hear God's call and we commit ourselves. You know what? These kids are not just kids. They're not just numbers. They have names. They have a story. They are waiting on us. They are waiting on God's church. We are God's church called to make a difference in our generation. And when God has a dream, he shares his anointing upon us. And he enables us to do this, these great things. Do you think it's easy to be here talking to all of you in a language that's not my mother tongue? <laughs> I, I was pretty nervous. But you know what? We need to be brave because it's not for us. It's not, about, it's not about us. It's about God and about his children. So let's step forward. Let's get out of our comfort zone. Let's work together. Sometimes it's much easier to try to do it on our own, but it's not as efficient. So let's work, work together in collaboration because you and I are ordinary people that God wants to use to change our nations, to change the reality of our children. And we are going to see a Brazil without orphans. We are going to see a world without orphans because of him. God bless you. Kop kum ka.